Good morning all, Tady here, and welcome to Tady Games. Today we're actually going to be talking about how to make the entire game that we made for the Game Jam in four days, and we're going to talk about every little component that we can think of. Let's do it! First things first, this video was sponsored by Videoblocks.com and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Right now we're going to talk about my game. I know it says Sozi and Gary, however I made this entire thing by myself in four days and I just put them there because the credits in the actual game needed to be filled. You can't just say, well, made by Tater Games. So we put music by Sozi and story by Gary just to fill in the actual space that we were walking. I guess you could say that a trick is to actually make up a lot of stuff. So this is our initial scene. The entire game has four scenes. One of course is the main menu which is supposed to teach you how to actually play the game. Next up is the main map which is the map that you spend most of your time in. This place is of course extremely important to get right seeing as the player will be in this place most of the time. So you're going to notice that in comparison to the other two or three uh, scenes that we have in this game this is the best lit, this has the most objects to interact with, this has the most sort of environmental features added into it. Then of course we have the basement scene which is supposed to be the audience's big shock. Finally we have the final map which is the end sort of credit sequence and also the outro and also the you know there is a story to this actual game, it completes the entire story. And it is pretty much just a duplicate of the main scene. So of course the way that I decided to use some of the music that I had made was to be played through a radio. I don't really like games where soundtrack is blasting 24-7. So this is a way that players can kind of choose whether or not they want music. Uh, a lot of people did like the way that the music was portrayed. And of course you just click the radio to turn it on click it to turn it off. That was the first thing that was implemented into this game before anything else. It was pretty much just this scene that you're seeing right now and of course a table with a radio on top of it. That was the entire game. Then of course we head into Marmoset Hexels to actually create all the objects that we want. Now seeing as we are working with this sort of pixel art sort of platformer 2D type thing where you have a lot of uh, depth. The concept of the game, just like the last night, which was the theme, was basically a perspective-based 2D game. Or a 2D game in a 3D environment, which is pretty much the best way to think about it. So I basically just created a plane and then of course slapped the texture that I made in Marmoset Hexels 2. I'm not the best at pixel art, so I did get a few references of Google Images and I was just like, okay, so that's what people expect a pixel art version of, let's say, a wrench to look like. And I just kind of tried to draw it in my own little style. Some of the objects work out really well and some of them do not work out really well. Another trick to cover up the fact that I'm not really good with pixel art is actually creating these trees as silhouettes. So instead of shading these trees with different colors, I, they're actually all one color. And the reason why this image kind of sells is because it's, it's just a silhouette of the background. That sun is blooming so much that it is very hard to see the actual texture on the trees. And because of this, I could skip texturing the trees and I could just make the silhouette Look, and it was pretty easy from then on. Then of course we can create the environment just like we usually create an environment. We need grass, we need rocks um, and all that type of stuff. When it came to the terrain all I did was make a pixelated version of some grass. I just used again Marmoset Hexels to make this. Then of course using Hexels again I just created the actual grass texture that blooms out. However despite this being 2D I did want the grass to sort of wave. So what we did was again Hexels 2 created little grass uh, details that can actually come out of the ground and wave around as they do in Unity's standard terrain tools. Then of course we just paint it to give a little bit of depth so that we have a full ground we have a background and of course when things are very close to the camera our depth of field makes it a little bit blurry and when they are far away it is also blurry but everything within our walk range is a great great crisp quality image. So I did a few tests when it came to the sun's direction and of course when the sun is on the side of the camera then you actually get to see a lot of the detail but beforehand I was actually discovering that if the shadows come towards the camera it creates a lot more depth and it has a much cooler look and the shadows kind of don't really get seen if it's being portrayed in the other side of the uh, objects. 
So that is why we have the silhouette figure coming towards us, that is why we have the shadows coming towards us, and of course you have the light beaming through the two windows, all of which creates a very cool effect. The final thing was the water. Now I did want water in my scene, water always gives that sunset feel a little bit of a boost. So it was one of the final things that I did to actually create this scene and in order to get that water all I did was use a Unity standard asset called Water 4. So I made a few edits to make sure that the water wasn't too rough of course, it gave that very deep ocean uh, kind of effect, um, however I wanted it to be very sway, very slowly, very calm and peaceful. I also changed the reflective colour and the refractive colour to be a little bit more orange and yellow uh, just so that we have those nice highlights that you see in the actual ocean. I thought all in all this actually sells the game extremely well and I'm very proud of that actual water to land and to sun ratio. Now we are going to take a quick break, talk about our video sponsors and then when we come back we're actually going to talk about coding the entire thing and making the entire story and all of that lovely stuff. See you then. Firstly, thank you very much to Videoblocks for supporting this channel. Videoblocks is one of the fastest growing largest stock video libraries with over 3 million videos, After Effects templates, and of course, motion backgrounds. This includes being the only contributor marketplace that actually gives 100% of the commissions back to the original artists. And of course, we're all creators ourselves, so we know how hard it is when companies take a large chunks of money away. It's finally really good to see that in a company. And on top of all of this, every single single clip on the website comes with a royalty free agreement which means you can't get hit with any of those copyright claims. So we're actually giving away 7 days of video blocks so that you guys can go ahead and try it out and of course get access to this massive video library and all the royalty free licenses that it comes with, all of which is free. So if you want to try it out, go to videoblocks.com forward slash youtube or you can click the link in the description below to start your 7 days of video blocks 100% for free. So let's move right into the character controller, it is pretty much just a FPS controller except I've disabled the look rotation when it comes to moving your mouse so that it always stays in one position and that position is of course facing towards the sun's direction which means that if we press W it moves towards the sun, if we press S it moves away, A left, D right which is pretty cool just to get the character controller um, up and running really really fast and then of course you just add as a child component your graphics for your character. So there are a few things that I can improve with this, the first is of course animating our character and of course flipping the image so that when we move left he actually faces left and when we move right he faces right and animates as you walk. So this time around I thought that I would challenge myself as a lot of you guys out there should be doing and try and get a story going, um, in, in my case try and get a story going, usually I make games that have a lot of gameplay in them but this time I really wanted the story to actually be pushed forward. Um, I don't know if I achieved that or not, I got a lot of comments uh, a little bit iffy about it, some people really enjoyed it, some people thought that well there could be a little bit more character development within the game, and yes they are correct. For example the character itself is not actually seen as a normal person or a normal thing so the ending does not really, is not uh, that big a shock, it's actually kind of bland in comparison to uh, a lot of other games out there. But I think I did pretty well given the 4 day quota, anyway we'll move on. One of the main parts of the gameplay is obviously picking things up and the way I did this was to actually create a game object in the place where I want everything to be picked up, I was going to call it something like a hand position. So everything that can actually be picked up of course has the tag used to it and so whenever something has a tag used your character will actually pick it up and bring it to this position trying to disable all of its components so that it doesn't do anything whilst it's in this position. By default everything that you can pick up is actually a rigid body so that it will fall when you drop it and it has a little bit of gravity added to it and of course a box collider so that you know uh, where exactly these collision points are. When we hover our mouse over it I pretty much say well we want to change our cursor to this icon right here which is the hand icon, so when we actually click and hold I want it to lock the cursor in the very centre of the screen so we're not actually picking, trying to pick up more than one object and stuff like that, it's very important that you sort of limit people's ability to do things that you know are going to cause glitches in the long run. So the best way to do this is actually to lock the cursor in the very centre of the screen and also take away the visibility of the cursor, which I have done in my game. Now the other 
object that is also available is of course what I like to call an inspectable object so it usually has the tag inspect. Now this one's a little more simple, we do not get rid of the cursor, we do not touch the cursor, we basically make it so that it says something that we want it to say. So there is a script on every single inspectable object with an array of text and every time you click it, it will display a random text. I wanted everything to be said by Evan, our character in the game, which means that we've added the 3D text in front of him and basically all we do is set that 3D text to say something and then when we of course want that to end we just make it say nothing. It's pretty simple. I used an IE numerator method to do this so it waits for a few seconds before actually making sure that the text says absolutely nothing. Then of course we have the objectives within the scene and those usually say stuff like 0 out of 4 meaning that there are 4 things that need to go into this objective and I use this to kind of prompt the player that you know naturally people want that to be 4 out of 4. So everything interactable within the scene is pretty much assigned to a specific number. For example the chicken coop is actually assigned to number 1 so as an objective script is added to it we set that number to 1. Pretty simple concept every single time something that is equal to 1 is near the objective that is also equal to 1 then it will collect it and pretty much by collecting it it just adds 1 to the objective number which is 0 out of 4 which means it will become 1 out of 4 and that means that our uh, object has now disappeared. We just destroy it pretty much. So objectives were actually very simple, all I needed to do was make one objective and then copy the script over to another two objects, for example in this case I've used the garden and of course uh, the final one which is the tractor. Now I actually made a separate script for the tractor just so that it will move once the script equals 4 out of 4. I thought that this was a very easy way to actually accomplish sort of progression just by moving that tractor a little bit so that we can get access to the key uh, and usually people would have seen the key first. I test played it with about three people before it actually went up on itch.io and of course they all did the exact same thing which was go all the way to the right, all the way to the left and see what they had and everyone noticed the key was there at the first time and tried to grab it. However, they couldn't grab it. So that's where you kind of kick in the story. I think engage is actually a better word. So you engage the story by giving them something but they don't know how to actually do this until they discover that, wait, if you put a chicken in the chicken coop it actually makes it go up by one. What can we put inside this tractor to make it move? Usually people did the chicken coop first. Now of course anybody who knows the game knows that they need to get rid of the tractor so another way to sort of enforce you not going for the tractor is to make something in a place that initially seems unreachable. If you haven't played the game go play it now it will give you a much better understanding of how the game works. So the battery is actually kept in the front of the house. Now often you won't look straight at that. The first thing you want to see is your character and of course you want to move that character and whilst you're moving you're actually looking around the character's area rather than in front and behind you. And this is actually mentioned since nobody really commented uh, both with the people I tested and of course some of the comments on itch.io and um, nobody really acknowledged that there was a noose hanging in the background uh, in the back of the game and you can actually click it and interact with it so it's a pretty decent standpoint where it's kind of like um, it proves my point when I say that there is absolutely um, no initial reaction to look behind you or in front of you you kind of just see it as the scenery so no one can reach the battery until they've actually explored the entire area and realize that hey hang on there's something I haven't seen and so they can actually find the battery that way. Forcing them to pretty much do everything on the level but it's not really a gameplay force thing it's more of a psychological force thing that I thought would probably work when people played the game. Now I, yeah I know I put a lot more thought into something that was so simple but you know that's you kind of got to do that to, um, to help yourself out and I thought it would progress the story a hell of a lot more um, by having sort of objectives so you kind of get a feel for this character. Usually it took people around 30 minutes uh, to maybe 15 minutes. Of course once you enter the basement it's pretty simple from there on out. The candle has actually got an emission layer on it so that you know it's the only thing that you can really see that is clickable. Other than that there's not much else out there. And when of course you click the candle I engage the thumpy sort of cello music which is pretty much just one note being held. And at the same time it reveals that your objective for this level or this basement is actually to take something to this thing that is tied up in the corner. Once you've accomplished the mission in the basement, which was pretty simple, used a very similar concept to making the house, 
Uh, I just kind of made the same size as the house except all underground and made it dark and ominous and instead of having a directional light I just had a point light. Anyway off topic, once you get back onto the main level it is actually a different scene than the original scene. This time I've blocked off the right hand side so you cannot continue to walk to the right hand side. I deleted a few objects there so that it would render faster and your only option is to walk left. But initially you're going to see something that you have never seen in this environment before seeing as everything is taken away there is one object left that you can actually interact with and that object is of course this weird bag shaped looking thing. So instinctually you will grab it and you will also notice that your speed has been slowed down so that it would actually match the track. So I had made this track but I didn't actually take into account the timing it would take. I made the scene after I made the track. When you enter this level it plays the track and the sort of climatic point of the track uh, just so happened to line up perfectly with revealing these gravestones or graveyard or just um, graves everywhere and it was supposed to be a sort of whoa what the hell is happening moment. Uh, I don't know if it worked 100% or not, um, but it sort of did. And I decided to add the credits there, even though it's not really credits, it's just words, because I wanted to have more than one word as you walk across, um, and that's pretty much it. Your last objective is to take this bag into this grave, this dug hole, that's the entire game's story. <laughs> there needs to be a bit more development when it comes to character especially, and there also needs to be a bit more development when it comes to your location that you're currently at. So the entire game, you can't look too far left or else you might see the gravestones, which it is impossible to see because they don't exist in that scene. Um, but the idea was that, oh, so right next to me this entire game, whilst I was playing this entire game, like if I was to extend it to maybe an hour's worth of gameplay, uh, then you're going to be, well, right next to me this entire time was all of this stuff. And it might be a little bit more shocking when people start to actually connect with the character and engage with the character and the entire environment. Let's move on really quickly to particles. I pretty much just made a leaf and <laughs> it kind of looks like a drumstick that you get from KFC right now. But uh, it was supposed to be a leaf and of course it just has a noise map um, as you kind of make it fall. It has a little bit of gravity, very, very soft gravity and um, the noise map makes it look like wind and makes it look random and very very nice and of course it just spawns where there are trees it is also the same color as the tree which means it blends in really nicely with the background and the last particle system is these kind is kind of like little dust particles which are basically little pixel squares um, that i've decided to make different sizes um, and cause, uh, have a little bit of a glow layer to it um, and the bloom really helps sell the effect they're basically the same as the leaves except the gravity has been lowered significantly and instead of spawning instantly they actually fade in and fade out. And all this effect does is give it a sort of mystical sort of vibe to it. Um, it's not a real location and I just wanted to play around with particles. The final particle I made was the fish and I thought that this was just a nice little thing. It just spawns one in the upward direction and of course it's randomized rotation with a little bit of noise in it so that as it comes up it will just plop in a random corner. Uh, and of course you make of the spawn time or spawn delay uh, a few seconds so that you just have fish jumping randomly and I thought it was one of the coolest things that I did in this. I really enjoyed the fish and in real life I really enjoy fish. So that is pretty much everything there is to know about my game. As per usual every time I make games usually I reveal the scripts to you guys so for this time I'm actually going to reveal the scripts to you guys in the exact same manner. Go to the link in the descriptions there should be paste bin links there with all the scripts from this game. Um, also if you want to play it there should be a game jam link in the description and also I've already made a tutorial for one part of this which is the image effects and if you guys want tutorials on anything else within this game don't ask for bloody uh, how to make a MOBA tutorials please <laughs> all right if you guys want tutorials or a little bit more in-depth uh, explanation for anything within this game do ask for it um, I'll be more than happy to talk about it and show you guys uh, how to do little aspects thank you guys very much for watching sorry I haven't been uploading in the last few days I was on holiday and it was a sort of surprise little vacation thing for me um, so thank you very much uh, and hopefully you guys understand <laughs> uh, we actually head in tomorrow with another banana bread for all the questions that we actually got over the four days that I wasn't around and then of course we'll just get on to things as usual make a few more games make a bit of music all that type of stuff uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun so thank you very much for watching guys I shall see you next time when we play I don't even know, I haven't planned anything. And if you don't like the haircut, remember to comment apple pie. I really shouldn't be encouraging this sort of food-based system that we got going on here. But nevertheless, see you tomorrow.